Newton's third law. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For shooters, it's called recoil. Three-gun national champion and accomplished shooter Tommy Thacker demonstrates how the weight of the gun, weight and speed of the bullet, and firearm mechanics can affect recoil. Primary recoil begins momentarily after the firing pin hits the primer. Propellant rapidly creates an expansion of gas that overcomes the inertia of the bullet and accelerates it down the barrel against the force of friction and air resistance. Secondary recoil starts when the bullet leaves the barrel and there's a sudden release of gas. The gun is pushed back much like a rocket. Here we have two revolvers, a 22 long rifle and a 44 mag, similar in make and size, but different in weight. The 22 long rifle weighs 44 ounces, while the 44 mag raging bull weighs 63 ounces. The increase in mass reduces the reaction of the recoil. Weight and speed of the bullet also contribute to recoil. A 22 round most commonly used for plinking and small game has little recoil, while a 44 round, which is larger and loaded to higher pressures for greater velocity, produces increased force and recoil energy. The mechanics of the firearm can also affect the amount of perceived recoil felt by the shooter. A semi-automatic will have less perceived recoil than a revolver of the same caliber. The recoil is spread throughout a longer period of time and the effect is partially used up in the operation of the slide, which is designed to absorb a great deal of force. It's all about physics and if you ask Newton, recoil isn't going anywhere. How strong the effects are felt by the shooter is highly dependent on the weight, caliber, and mechanics of the firearm. With an understanding of recoil and trying out different models and calibers, you can choose a firearm that has the right amount of recoil for you. For Firearm Science, I'm Jesse Duff. See you next time.